Hey guys, Steve Felici here. There's no doubt that there's been talk about whether it's a wise decision to invest in retail spaces, especially in the last few years. It's becoming tougher for Australian retailers to stay afloat. A prominent Australian fashion retailer group has shut down dozens... Hundreds of workers are facing a bleak future tonight, set to shut dozens of stores. Global manufacturing shutdowns have left Australian retailers scrambling to meet demand. They can't do anything about it, and they know that customers are not coming through the doors. The argument has been that retail spending is down because online shopping is up. Online shopping will still be the biggest winner, reaching record levels. Droves of Queensland shoppers are ditching tradition and moving with the times, turning to online grocery shopping. And online retailers are the new battleground. We're now heading into probably one of the biggest shopping experiences yeah. ever. But this argument is often made from the perspective of those who own retail stores in large shopping centres. Sure, more and more people are turning away from shopping malls in favour of online stores because of the convenience. But investing in retail isn't only limited to these large centres. There are quite a few different types of retail properties you can buy, and many of them are actually relatively low risk investments depending on where they are located and if they are essential service. For example, did you know that medical businesses fall under the retail umbrella? And they're a super hot topic amongst investors at the moment because they're generally not impacted by what the economy is doing. People are always going to need medical services. If you're interested in finding out more about investing in medical businesses, I've done a separate video on that, so make sure you check that out. Properties for service businesses like hairdressers, barbers, nail salons, beauticians and massage centres also fall into the retail category. Service businesses can attract loyal customers, but need high foot traffic and affordable rent. A high rent without proportionally high cost of services means a less profitable business for the tenant. So that's something you need to consider when looking into a service business. And then, of course, there are properties for general retail. General retail covers a wide range of properties for businesses with different needs. Supermarkets, bakeries, butchers, news agencies, specialty stores, and childcare centers are a few of the options under the general retail category. But each of these has their own considerations. For example, large supermarkets are usually too expensive for the normal investor and has a low yield. So you will need to consider a small supermarket in an area where there's no big retailer. And with specialty stores like jewelers and bookshops, it's important to analyze any existing or potential tenants' business carefully to make sure it has long-term potential. Now, just some of the general things to keep in mind when venturing into retail investment space. First, factors such as local demographics, medium income levels, traffic volume, site configuration, residential and commercial density, and tenant mix all play a part in the success of retail properties. Traffic needs to be suitable for the type of retail center. Small neighborhood centers can thrive on secondary roads, whereas bigger ones need primary arterial roads. Shops that are situated parallel to the road are generally superior to those that are perpendicular as they have more street frontage and visibility. Your store's signage should be easily visible to foot and road traffic and access in and out of the location should be easy. For small retail centres, the leases are commonly on a net basis, which means the tenant pays some or all of the costs, such as council and water rates, body corporate fees, and maintenance. This generally suits the tenant because the presentation of the business is super important to its success and they would like to have responsibility for it. Larger retail centres, such as malls with lots of tenancies, will typically pay a flat rate plus a percentage of their annual sales. This means smaller businesses can afford to be in the center, giving the property owner a good mix of tenancies will attract more foot traffic. It's also worth mentioning that retail leases have specific legislation depending on the Australian state or territory they are in. Most retail shop leases are regulated by the Retail Leasing Act, so you need to have a good understanding of the relevant laws if you intend to lease premises to operate a retail business. There are a few other things that the Retail Act must stipulate. For example, there are certain costs that cannot be passed on to the tenant. So you, as the landlord, would then be responsible for them. These costs include expenses that don't benefit the premises. Land tax, contributions to a sinking fund for capital works, management fees, unless they relate to the management of the actual premises, capital costs, and legal expenses relating to the lease. So there are a few things to wrap your head around. There are definitely retail spaces that perform better than others, like medical premises or childcare centers, 
but again, this will largely depend on where you are looking to buy, which means that getting your foot into the retail investment door could be trickier to navigate than other commercial properties. I'd highly recommend you speak to a buyer's agent if you're thinking of venturing into this commercial space. A buyer's agent will not only help you find a suitable property, but they'll also include due diligence as part of their process by conducting a thorough analysis of the property and its potential profitability. As a buyer's agent myself, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have, so feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Otherwise, if you would like to know more about how I've helped thousands of clients successfully source and purchase quality commercial property across the country, get in touch today. I'm Steve Polisi, author of Commercial Property Investing Explained Simply. Thanks for watching.